Well, today we're talking about pretty much the worst thing that we could do in our industry, and that is gutter cleaning. If you haven't done it, or you're thinking about doing it, or you do do it and you just want to hear more about it, then stay tuned for this week's episode of WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com. And we are live. We're here. We're talking about gutter cleaning. Um, if you haven't listened to uh, WCR Nation, we are a podcast that's based on the business side of the service industry. So window cleaning, pressure washing, janitor, basically anybody who is in the service business can definitely learn. So hopefully you'll learn a thing or two or just have fun hanging out either way. But uh, I do have a couple of quick shout-outs before we get going on the episode itself. I want to say what's up to Alan Brown, Peter Lindstrom, what's going on, man? Clay Davis, what up? Ryan Crocco, what's going on, Mr. Paradise? Uh, Taylor uh, Mishler, what's going on? Josh Gutierrez, what's up, Josh? I'm killing your name, man. But uh, thanks. What's up to guys? Uh, thank you for just being epic. And if you want to be epic and you want to be one of the cool kids, order your supplies from me, windowcleaner.com. My cell phone is 862-312-2026. 862-312-2026. Just write it down. Save it in your phone. Save it as Jersey and call me or text me if you got something ready to put in in your cart. Or if you have questions on absolutely anything, I'd love to help you. Shoot me a text. Call me, whatever you want. Um, definitely do that. You guys are absolutely epic. This last week was crazy. How many of you are just like loyal, just so stinking loyal. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And high fives to all of you who have ordered from me. Um, just do it. Be awesome. I want to be a rep, but, uh, at the end of the show, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off. So stay tuned. Listen to that. Um, but like I said, early on this week, we're talking about window. We're talking about gutter cleaning has an add-on service. It's the time of year, man. Now, I'm in North Carolina now, so we really don't have leave issues yet. It's a little early in the season when this uh, episode is airing, but some of you in the colder areas are already there. Uh, Eric up in Alaska has been posting pictures and videos, man. He's been in like the 40s. Rainy, dreary. It looks like winter already. Um, So some of you are already experiencing gutter cleaning. And I have to say... Gutter cleaning is good money. Comment down below. Um, I know somebody had asked on Facebook before numbers and stuff, but man, gutter cleaning is uh, a really good add-on, but it sucks. So if you ever had to make hard money before, gutter cleaning is that. It really, really is. Unless you're running a gutter vac, which we'll talk about later. It makes things way easier, but it's an expensive piece of equipment. But gutter cleaning is just not fun. And the reason is, Well, there's a lot of reasons. Mainly the reason is just stinky, dirty. It's really bad. Like when you pressure wash, sure, sometimes you get, uh, you know, splashes on you when you're window cleaning. Sure, the dirt kind of has to go somewhere. But when you're cleaning gutters, that black muck up there is absolutely putrid. And I'm painting a beautiful picture and I want you to be aware of that. But the thing with gutter cleaning is, is that leaves and other debris continually sit in water. Because even if you kind of pitch gutters right, eventually kind of builds up. If you have a clog, then there's standing water. The leaves are in the water. It pulls all the tannin and everything else. Decays them super fast. And you got really, 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 really fertile, black, deep black, mineral rich soil. And if you're a plant, you grow great. If you are a plant that lands in the gutter, and you don't get them cleaned, you've all seen that where they have water, really good fertile soil, and plants grow like crazy. Huge. I've seen some awesome ones where uh, we pulled a run out and it was probably 10 foot long of just roots in general. It was easy to pull out the whole gutters because the root base was in the entire base of the gutters. It's crazy. Well, I know I, I had my gutters cleaned last year. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. These are like hardened plants in your gutter. These things have been there for a while. Um, But everybody has that kind of excuse. And gutter cleaning isn't something that people think about until it becomes time that they need to have it. So advertising for gutter cleaning, you have to just slam advertising, get it out there. 
it's the biggest kind of push because there's a season for a lot of us. I was in Wisconsin for a long, long time, and there's just a point where, hey, guess what? There are no more gutters to be cleaned this year. Everything is frozen. They're not going to unfreeze now for months and months and months. It will be, you know, April before we can get back out there. Sometimes March, if it's warm, right? So there's this big mad rush for gutters, but I do love gutter cleaning because it's something you can add on a floater board. Now, I don't have it here because obviously you're looking, but I have a um, whiteboard behind my seat at my desk and on there it just says big word says float. And on that float calendar, or float schedule if you will, I have all the jobs that don't require somebody to be home that I can put on and fill space, like gutter cleaning. Also, out uh, on uh, casement window projects and some other things. But gutter cleaning is basically number one. Gutter cleaning is great because nobody has to be there. Nobody has to let you in. Uh, technically, you know, the water's still on anyway since beginning end of the year. Um, nobody needs to be there. They're just a really good job uh, to just add on to a floater. So fill your schedule. And anytime somebody calls you, this is how I word it. I say, um, you know, nobody needs to be there, uh, obviously, when we do the gutter cleaning. So I'm going to put you on something called our floater board. It means as soon as possible, we can get there. We'll do it. You'll know that we were there because we'll leave an invoice at the property, blah, 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 blah. And that's what we do. When we do gutter cleaning or any of the other float stuff, I leave an envelope with all the goodies. And we've talked about that. Go back and listen to some of the episodes about how I do um, the, um, uh, envelope stuffing and kind of all that, but that, that's what I do. Keep it on the float and gutter cleaning for the most part is really good money. Now, every now and then you get into a job that really sucks badly and you lose your, uh, butt on it because of time. But for the most part, it's a job nobody wants to do. So you're able to charge more for it. Our minimums start at $199 for gutter cleaning, but it actually is $249. That's what we switched it over to about maybe a year ago. Um, and I only say $199 is because I still have two people on our list that get it at $199 because they're little old people that I've had forever and I uh, haven't changed it. Any new customers come in, it's $249. Just it is. Um, if it's a smaller job, some of you guys are going to take it. Smaller jobs are awesome too, but I want to make sure that I'm getting paid to get that done. $199 is what we'll do if we're pairing it with services or something like that, right? Um, but that's our minimum. Now, we don't need to talk about price because pricing kind of goes all over the place. Cookie cutter house, very easy, little trees, you know, uh, square style where there's not lots of ins and outs and dormers and everything else. Those are the things you need to look at when you're pricing. Uh, a big piece of that pricing side of it is that there are dormer windows on a lot of houses depending on size. Now, a dormer window has those two runs of gutters on the side and those are very, very hard to get to, uh, again, if you're doing it manually. So you have to price those accordingly. If you are... Um, doing dormers, then you have to find a way to get there safely. And a dormer in an exposed attic or a larger attic is going to be minimally three stories up. And then it's going to be inset from the edge where you're going to have to probably get on the roof or you're going to have to use a tool to get up there. So things to think about. Obviously, we have jobs, uh, largest gutter cleaning jobs, about $1,200. Uh, it's huge. It's, you know, uh, just a giant, giant property. Um, but again, you know, it, it is definitely worth the time and, and effort. We have commercial jobs that, uh, we charge $99 a unit because they're all connected and, um, we do things like that. It just depends on how you want to kind of clean them as to what you're going to be charging. But I'm not here to talk about prices. That's not really it. Uh, but I do want to tell you, uh, some of the most awesome horror stories of gutter cleaning just to set the mood it's close to not really close but it's coming up on halloween right and by the way if you are watching on youtube make sure to comment down below just write anything uh it really helps us with the video helps me out and i get to talk with you that's awesome thumbs up on that uh video by the way and tell me your story horror stories in the gutter but my worst one ever i just mentioned it a couple weeks ago if you're not an avid listener but i was 
I knew that the gutter was, the downspout was clogged, so I had a hose up there running water to kind of wet everything down so that it's a little bit easier when you're snaking and things like that. And I had the hose up there and I thought it was draining at some point. I just wasn't paying attention. Set my ladder up. I'm climbing up the gutter and I grab the gutter itself, kind of help myself over and it pulls it down and I just get a mouthful and face full of the stinkiest, grossest, blackest, yeah gross muck ever like and i'm covered in stink just the worst smelling ones it's just how it is sometimes right uh we've had that um i've had another one where we had uh the bag when we um uh, scoop and remove that we bag everything up and uh the bag had slid in the back and ripped open and that uh black mud was everywhere. We opened it up and it was a really wet gutter and it was just on everything. The guy's buckets and tools and one guy had his belt back there, which he shouldn't have. We have side bins for that. But everything was just trashed and super stained. It's just gross, gross, gross stuff. And there's bugs. If you're into that, there's a lot of that. You find lots of interesting things in gutters. Some of the things that I found, tennis balls are notorious for blocking downspouts just in general they are frisbees i can't tell you how many i've seen uh, but more interestingly i found um i had one time where somebody had said that it wasn't draining uh, and i got up there and the back side of the downspout had a giant wasp nest which completely sealed off i don't even know how they did that because they would have been drowning the whole time i don't anytime it rained i don't even know how they did that but Maybe the gutters weren't pitched right or something, but it was giant. So now I'm snaking and, and hosing and all these wasps are everywhere. It was absolutely horrendous. Um, but I have found frog on a second story. We found frogs and little uh, newts. I don't even know how they get up there. We found those. Um, I found a giant, not giant. I found a yeah, good three foot, maybe. Uh, a little smaller snake skin in the gutter. Never found the snake, but it was just a big snake skin up there, which was very weird. Uh, in Wisconsin, we don't have a lot of snakes, so it was very weird to see that. Um, I've also found a lot of uh, weed paraphernalia from uh, drug use, if you will. Now, what happens is people have their upstairs windows, right? You know, like that dorm window I was telling you about. If they drop something, it rolls down to the gutter, and they just go, well, I'm not going to get that. If it's like the kid of the house or what, you know, they're trying to smoke. Outside of the house, I've found lots of uh, glassware and things like that in, in, in gutters. You find lots of lots of things. It catches anything that falls on. But back to kind of the, the, the idea of everything. There's two types of ways you can clean a gutter. I should say three. The third one is going to be gutter vac. But the main two types manually cleaning it is going to be uh, the ladder from the ladder. Or it's going to be walking the roof line. Now, contact, you know, go to OSHA's website, see what they require, see if their states, your state requires anything funny. I'm not going to tell you what is required to walk on a roof, but there are things that are required to walk on a roof. And a roof really should be super, super flat. It's not even really recommended to get up there, even though it's faster, because when you're there, you're right on the edge of the roof. So be very, very careful if you're doing that. That way's faster. This is your tool, right? You're, you're scooping it and putting it into a bucket, and that's pretty much it, walking the entire down, the, the entire gutter length until you get to the downspout. What I do is I tap the side of the downspout. If it echoes, it's empty. If it's clumpy, then you're stuffing it. And I use a um, snake, you know, a, a, a plumbing snake for downspout. Super fast, really easy. Uh, there are also tools you connect to a hose, which are very easy for that. But that's how, you know, the main way that you can do from the roof. The other one is from the gutter itself. So you put the ladder up, usually using standoffs, because you don't want to press the gutter. You don't want to scratch the gutter, of course. But you don't want to press your weight on the gutter because it folds in and makes it very difficult to clean right there. But if you're using standoffs, which are those like antlers, right, uh, that will hold your ladder back. And depending on what you're doing, you can put it on the fascia, you can put it on the roof itself. However the dimensions work for you, make it that way. But doing that, the fastest and best way to do that so you're not moving the ladder every, you know, what do you got? Uh, three feet that way, three feet that way where you can reach without leaning too terribly much. What you do is you get a tool on the end of a pole. And any extension pole works for this. 
there's a few different tools. There's something that is uh, commonly known as the gutter spoon. One of my favorite, actually. It's just so stinking simple. It's uh, super, super rigid, um, like a spoon with holes in it. But the back handle of it, which you can use hand-wise, is screws onto a pole. Now, the nice thing with this tool, not only are they cheap, like 10 bucks or something, but the, the bottom of the spoon is flat. And the reason is, is as you're pulling, you can get right into the nook that is the bottom of the tray of the gutter and pull everything towards you. Um, when you can use a pole, pulling it through, getting it over the um, bands themselves, the actual gutter straps, uh, you get as much as you can up to you and then scoop it up, put it in your bucket, and you're good to go. Now, with a pole, you can work maybe, you know, eight foot one way, eight foot the other way. You're doing 16 foot every time you move your ladder, which makes things a lot more efficient because going down your ladder, moving your ladder, resetting your ladder, all that takes time, right? We're a time-based business, so you want to be as efficient as possible. There's another tool uh, that uh, is actually very, very popular and that is a, a gutter tool i think it's actually called the gutter tool but it actually has kind of a bend in it that still connects to a uh, pole but it helps you to pull towards you and then you flip it over you can get under the strap go back over you have to kind of get that whereas the spoon you kind of have to wedge it under the strap and pull it out it just makes it a lot easier the big downfall and i'm telling you right now you will throw them away. I don't know how it happens, but every season we lose a handful of them every year. Um, they were making them in like a reddish orange bright colors. I was getting those. I was, it doesn't matter. I don't know how they're getting thrown away, but they are. Oh, well, they're cheap. It's all cost of doing business. You're still making 150 an hour ish on gutters. So not too terrible, not too terrible. Um, but, when you're doing scooping, what I always do, well, actually both of them, is instead of putting it in a bag right away, because uh, plastic uh, bag will kind of rip on the uh, uh, shingles, you want to have a bucket. So simple Lowe's or Home Depot bucket, uh, orange or blue, whatever your poison. And then on that bucket, go in the painting aisle and get something called a painter's hook. What is a little bit of a clip on one side and a hook on the other side with a little chain. What that does is it clips onto the ring, uh, the rung, I'm sorry, of your uh, ladder and the bucket can just hang there. So you're not holding a bucket while you're on the ladder. You can just kind of hook it up there. Very, very nice. And it also hooks on the lip of the gutter itself. So if you need to push that over, go back down, move the ladder, grab your bucket. It's all right there. Nice and easy. The thing is like five bucks. It's a gutter hook. No, painting, painter's hook. Go in the painter's aisle. You'll see it. Search Amazon, you'll see it. It's there. Super, super easy. Um, it's just nice to be able to have that much at a time. Gutter stuff gets heavy. Um, you want to be able to kind of go up and down a ladder without being super, super crazy. And one thing you're doing, this is just a stupid little, you know this already, but I'm going to tell you anyway. When you're going up and down a ladder, put your hand around the back side of the ladder and you hold it like that, like a railing all the way down. Don't grab a rung and grab a rung because there's a point where you're not holding anything. And if you got a bucket in your hand, it just doesn't make any sense. Go behind the ladder. That way, if something happens, you're always right there where you can grab it. It's like a railing on a ladder. Do that. I've had <sighs> things have come up. Issues have come up where people have been doing the rung style, slipped and uh, really fallen a couple of things before they caught themselves and had a guy on the roof that shot the ladder off. Anyway, don't do that. Don't be those guys. Uh, be safe with that. Again, working from a ladder, ladders are super dangerous. If you're using standoffs on the top and you're using weights or blocks on the bottom, there's a lot of different things you can do, but just be safe on that ladder because you're going to be walking, you know, farther on those two. Um, the one thing that I would recommend, now again, this is if you won the lottery yesterday and for some reason you still want to clean gutters, but there's something called a gutter vac. Now my favorite one is by RHG. Um, it's just the most durable. It's the nicest, just easiest. The vac is ridiculously crazy. The vac's actually an IPC vac. It's amazing. What it is, is uh, sections of pole that can go up to 30 feet, you know, with a bend on the top. So when you're on the ground, 
this is all plugged into a vac and this is not a shop vac this is a high 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 powered vac with three motors running at uh what is it 2400 watts running on a generator but this thing produces some crazy crazy lift now I heard a guy uh, a couple times, uh, well, I've heard people try it, but I've only heard a guy once that has actually had success with it uh, with a shop vac, but there's just not even close to enough suction in a shop vac. So don't don't get the poles and think it'll work. It's not gonna work, I'm telling you. Uh, but that system together, you're talking uh, over $2,000 for that. But now all you're doing is just walking. You're walking, you feel the, the gutter strap, you pick it up, you put it on, move it back to the gutter strap and keep going. The point of gutter cleaning and this is what some people have issues with. It's not to make the gutter so you can eat out of it. It doesn't not for you to make it look brand new. It doesn't need to shine again in the inside. What needs to happen is that it needs to flow and not get clogged. That's the biggest thing why you clean a gutter. If your gutter is clogged, you're going to get water that backs up and you're going to get uh, you know, ice dams. You're going to get um, uh, damage in your fascia. You're going to get uh, water that goes back up under the shingle. You're going to have a ton of problems. So you have to have that water flow. That's why gutters are there, right? So all you're doing is cleaning the gutter out enough that you're allowing it to continue to flow. And that gutter vac does an awesome, awesome job. Now, the other thing with that is when you get to a downspout, which everybody's different, but I find maybe one in 20 plus gutters maybe have a clogged downspout, not a big deal. But if you're using a gutter vac, you can actually take that tube and put it over that and actually suck the stuff out, uh, at least to open up that clock. So it very, very, you know, does work really, really well. Some guys want a camera up there. Some guys want a mirror. I don't run either of those. Like you can feel if there's stuff there. Like I'm not trying to make it absolutely crystal clear. If there's still a little grit in there, uh, that it's a clean gutter. Like I'm not going to, you know, remove necessarily 20 years of grit. I'm going to remove as much as I can, but I'm not going to spend 40 minutes on one run of gutters to try to get it to shine again, right? That's where this gutter vac works absolutely epic. Um, by the way, yes, you can get those gutter vacs from us. Uh, you can get them right through me. Uh, 862-312-2026. It's life-changing if you're a gutter cleaner, but it's pricey. You know, what does a bucket and a spoon cost? You're at like 15 bucks, or you can spend the money to get a gutter vac. It's a big difference. And there are other gutter vac companies on the market that we don't sell, um, but uh, I do think those are a little bit overpriced. For what you get compared to what you get with this, for twice the money, it just doesn't make sense. But there you go. That That's the gutter vac system. It's super, super fast, super easy. You don't have to worry about moves. You're literally walking as you do it. So you can get a gutter, a house done gutters in minutes, minutes. It's crazy. But again, you're not up there on a ladder. Now, if you do have dormers or something like that, you may have to get a ladder up there. But there is one thing in gutters that will throw a uh, gutter spoon in your spoke, and that is gutter guards. Gutter guards suck. Now... Gutter guards don't ever work, ever, ever. There's not a gutter guard, brand, make, type, style, anything that I've ever seen work 100%. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong in the comments right here if you're watching on YouTube. But I've never seen one that didn't still need to get cleaned or flushed out or something. Either if it's a screen type, the screens have to get washed or scrubbed. If it is a, um, you know, uh, uh, gutter helmet style, uh, you still have to flush in that that thing. If there's any dents, you're getting issues. There's just a lot of types. I used to install gutter guards, uh, and I realized it just was it was like snake oil. Like I was selling something that it just they were not working what I'd like them to work. So we we stopped selling gutter guards. If you're installing gutter guards, they're good money on that too. But I just can't find anyone personally that I like to install. But if you're trying to clean them, you have to know the styles. Now, the only way you're going to know the styles of gutter guard is to see them all, unfortunately. So as you start to see the different types, there are a few that hook onto the face of the gutter and slide under the shingle. Those are the easiest to kind of pop off and remove. Um, if there's not a ton of debris down in the gutter, you you can actually uh, pull off uh, one or two, flush the gutter with water, and um, go to the next spot and keep going that way and push everything down. But you're still going to get muck in there. You're still going to get like 
pine straw in there, you're just still going to have issues. So even with gutter guards, it doesn't protect you. But if you're using gutter, if you have gutter, if you have gutter guards or you're getting in front of gutter guards and you got a gutter vac, you're going to have some issues there too, because now you have to get up on a ladder to do it. Or you can clean up the top of the gutter and hope for the best. It's not always uh, the best case scenario for sure. So gutter guards are the bane of our existence in gutter cleaning for sure. Um, so just, just double check what you got out there. But uh, uh, one other thing for uh, gutters that I had kind of started talking about is kind of the process. So I always tell people that I scoop, bag, and remove the debris. And by the way, I didn't know that I said the word bag wrong. And now every time I say it, I just know there's people out there going, what did he say? Why is he saying it like that? I'm sorry, I'm from the Midwest. I didn't know that we had an accent until I moved to North Carolina where everybody is uh, very okay with telling you that. And they're all people from Long Island who have told me that, who have a stronger accent than me. But anyway, I'm sorry, deal with it. But uh, yeah, so we scoop back and remove the debris and uh, we also offer a flush. So if we flush the gutters afterwards, some people like that. Uh, I'd say probably about 60% of people may uh, add that. We just charge an extra 20 bucks for the flush. It just takes more time to go down, get the hose, come back up, that kind of thing. But that is kind of a final one. You get more debris that then flushes out kind of down through the downspout, pick it up and uh, put it back in your bag and scoot out of there. Um, but that's basically the process. Uh, that's how I sell it. That's how I put it out there is I scoop, bag, and remove the debris. I take all the stinky gutter muck with me. That's what I always say because that's also a selling point. It basically tells people that you're going to go up there, do the job, and they never have to see, smell, or you know, have any of it on their hands. That's very, we get it, we take it out, and we go. Some people will take pictures of the gutters because homeowners can't check. I think that's dumb. I, I, I'm sorry if that's what you do, that's cool. It could be a niche or something to help you... Uh, you know, sell the product more, make people comfortable. But the thing is, you can't take a picture of the entire gutter. And like I said, they're not always going to be crystal clear in there. They're just going to be cleaned enough, right? It's like plowing. Plowing is so you can get your car in and out, not so that there's not a speck of snow anywhere. It's kind of the same concept. But remember to have the right tools with you. Remember to have the right type of uh, snake or something in case of a downspout clog. Make sure to have enough super thick, the thickest garbage bags you can possibly buy. Get those and uh, make a lot of money. It's a great add-on because we already have ladders, because we're already there. And if you are one of those people who have a gutter vac, which we've sold tons and tons of them, but if you're one of those people who are using that or thinking about using it, that is a killer. That makes it actually enjoyable. Uh, one tip with that, by the way, keep a five gallon bucket of water down at the ground and every couple of minutes, just drop the pole down, suck up some water and go back up your, your golden. It helps kind of lubricate and keep things fresh. So that's it, man. You just learn more than you ever wanted to learn about gutters. And if you don't do it, do it, give it a shot. What the heck? But now's the time. Uh, put it on your floater board. If you're using a floater board, uh, fill up that extra space with it and uh, you'll make some money on it. It's just, it's just dirty. It's the dirtiest of our jobs. <laughs> if you get gutter muck on your hands, it will be there for like a week. Like it will be stained on your hands for a week. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But either way, it's good money. Do it. Make people happy. Continue to offer the services. It's pretty awesome. But if you got any comments on this video, please do share them down below. Um, if, uh, listen, I, last week, uh, we had a code and it was two dumps. If you guys don't know, I, uh, try my darndest. I don't think that I have sworn at all on any of these episodes. I know I had a guest who did, but, um, I always say, uh, two dumps. I always say, you know, who gives two dumps? I don't give two dumps, right? Cause it's the, the PG version of what it really means. And, uh, I was great to see people who were <laughs> texting me and calling me and had to say that because uh it was, it was it was my favorite yeah it was my favorite uh one so far this week um i am gonna go uh on this um the 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 different word of that i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna make these interesting every week i swear um but uh uh 
this week, it's just going to be Gutter. That's just the name. But I do want to thank everybody who called in uh, or texted with the code last week for 5% off and had to say two dumps. But this week, you're back to normal. Just say Gutter. Let me know. You have to order through me to get the 5%. You have to. It's just, you have to. I have people who are like, oh, I put the order in. Can I get that? No, you can't. There's not a way that I'm even going to go in and try to uh, adjust that. It's just not going to happen. It has to be through me so that it can be entered in this code. And it has to be done through text, uh, phone call, email, whatever you want. But let me know. 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone. So shoot me a text. Just say what's up. Say hi. Tell me anything. Give me an affirmation or give me a criticism. I am okay with it. Uh, but either way, I do appreciate everybody who orders from me. You guys are absolutely epic, absolutely amazing. Um, it is because of you that I get to actually live my life because my business is now sold. So uh, 100%, obviously, everything is coming here from uh, doing sales. So thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, big or little, doesn't matter. I appreciate it all the way. So anyway, go out there, clean a gutter. Uh, hopefully fall doesn't come too fast on us. Buy a gutter back, man. Things are awesome. But uh, either way, go out there and be epic.